Hello. So in our today's video, we are going to start with the next point that is the fertilization. As you have studied the definition of fertilization, fertilization is the fusion of haploid male gamete with the with the haploid female gamete to form a diploid zygote. Okay. So because of that, it is called as a syngamy. Okay. Then the events during fertilization, these are two. Pre-fertilization changes. First one is a pre-fertilization changes. And the second one is the post-fertilization changes. Okay, or uh, events. So pre-fertilization events or changes, events or change, events. More precise, we can say it as in a events. So related with the pre-fertilization and post-fertilization events, these are the events. So related with the pre-fertilization event. Pre-fertilization means prior to fertilization. That means it, it starts with the insemination and then the path followed by the sperm towards the ovum. That means arrival of sperm towards the ovum and then up to the penetration of ovum, uh, penetration of the sperm movement of sperm, arrival of sperm towards the ovum and the penetration of ovum towards in a, in a, in a ova, penetration of sperm into the ova. These are the changes. These are the events, especially come under the pre-fertilization events. And afterwards, the post-fertilization is it generally the cleavage and further on the blastula, gastrula and implantation what all these remaining is come under the post fertilization that means where exactly the male pronuclei fuses with the female pronuclei that comes under the post fertilization event okay so whatever the zygote formed to its cleavage and up to its embryo formation that all comes the multicellular embryo Right, zygote is a unicellular em embryo. Formation of zygote towards the yes, towards the multicellular embryo and organogenesis. All that events come under the post fertilization events. Okay, so fertilization is the fusion of haploid male gamete with a haploid female gamete to form a diploid zygote. And uh, the first event is the during insemination, the male shapes out. These events, the pre fertilization events, now we are going through it. So, this is the female reproductive tract. This is the vagina. This is the vulva. This inner lining is the muscle hair. And this lining is highly convoluted endometrium. Highly convoluted endometrium, right? So, these are the ovaries. Okay. On the day of 14th, okay, movement of sperm towards the egg. On the day of 14th, the ova gets released. That is the secondary oocyte. This secondary oocyte is taken into the fallopian tube and it waves into this region. And this region is called as an ampulla. This region is called as a ampulla. So this ampulla is the site of fertilization, right? So this secondary oocyte, this is the secondary oocyte. 
this is the secondary oocyte having haploid set of chromosome it is present in a ampulla and it remains viable near about 24 hours in a fallopian tubes or uterine tube okay in a uterine tube the life of this secondary oocyte is about 24 hours that means it remains viable or able to fertilize hmm, for near about 24 hours hmm, clear so here for 24 day uh, 24 hours who gives nourishment to this secondary oocyte in a fallopian tube so i am whatever the atmosphere present in a fallopian tube we are dealing with that hmm? so when the ovulation occurs at this site during that the inner lining of this fallopian tube the inner lining of this fallopian tube having two different type of cells the one is a ciliated epithelia okay these are the ciliated epithelium this all fallopian tube is internally lined by two type of cell the ciliated ciliated epithelial cells and another one is a non ciliated epithelial cells Hmm. These non ciliated epithelial cells are named as a peg cells. Okay, so mark this sentence, or uh, this is very important for your CT or need. Okay, so related with this, this the cells which are present in a fallopian tube, which are non ciliated. These are non ciliated epithelial cells which secretes a secretion. It secretes a secretion. And this secretion gives nourishment. This secretion gives nourishment to this secondary oocyte within that 24 hours. Okay. And making that ovum or secondary oocyte um, remains active for for fertilization process, okay? So, uh, this is very important function, which is to express in this region, as well as this fallopian tube get filled with the fluid. It is get filled with the fluid, which is a nutritive fluid, which provides nourishment to this secondary oocyte, as well as it is also responsible for capacitation of sperm. This fluid, the fluid which is secreted by this uh, cells, which are present in a fallopian tube, it is responsible for the capacitation of sperm. Mind the uh, uh, concentrate on the word capacitation. What do you mean by capacitation of sperm? Okay, the um, another important function is that uh, um, very important point is that sorry, uh, it is the only the capacitated sperm can fuse or fertilize the ovum, not the non-capacitated. So what do you mean by capacitated sperm, right? So uh, capacitation means what? As you know, this is the sperm which is moving towards the second, towards the ovum, suppose. This is the sperm. Okay, these are the sperms which are moving towards the, towards the ovum. Right, this sperm head having some specific glycoproteins having coat on it, having coat on it, okay, and having some proteins also, and some glycoproteins are also there. Hmm? So, when this sperm is moving into this region, into this region, okay. During that, the sperm get capacitated means what? Whatever this pro this glycoproteins or this receptor get removed out. It gets removed out. Now, this is called as capa capacitation. Means simply a conditioning. A conditioning of the head of the sperm. Okay, is called as capacitation. Clear? So, only the capacitated sperm can able to penetrate the ovum. Clear. So, in a last lecture, last video, you have studied that uh, here, when during insemination, the sperms are 
poured into the vagina of the female. Hmm? The semen contains, semen is a coagulated one. Hmm? This coagulated semen having so, semen of fluid, okay, especially of fluid which especially contains so many enzymes hmm? as well as 10% sperm. 90% that all the enzymes are present in it. Okay, so we have studied uh, in the last uh, lecture that the coagulates, hmm, uh, especially latch these sperms on the inner lining of this vagina. As you know, during the ovulation period, the vagina of female, okay, here is the gland which secretes the mucus, okay, and uh, so the female uh, uh, during uh, she start uh, especially um, the mucosal lining increased during the ovulation period in case of female, and during intercourse, what happened? The male shares the semen into the vagina of the female, and it it having. Especially, it is a semen is a coagulated one, and it having coagulates, so that uh, these sperms never ever drain out easily. They get entangled here or latch on the surface. Okay, they get latch on the surface. Okay, who because of whom coagulates? Okay. It is it is present in semen. Coagulase is present in a semen. Okay. Then the next one, after some time, the fibrinogen, the another protein is called as sorry, fibrinolysin. Another one is a fibrinolysin. Hmm. This fibrinolysin breaks all this, and then because of that, it gets freed from here. Okay, it gets freed from that coagulated nature decay It gets freed and this sperm moves towards the cervix region. And it also penetrates the cervix and enters in this region. As I have stated that near about 50% sperms get sacrificed to neutralize the Vagina of the female. The vagina of the female is too much acidic. It is too much acidic. So neutralize this vagina. It, it sacrifices here about 50% of the sperm. And the remaining which are more viable sperm. Those sperm which are more viable sperm moves towards the uterus. So in the uterus what happened? As you know, the during this period, on the day of 14th also, you know that uh, this inner lining of the mucosa or the endometrium, okay, this endometrium is become highly thick and mucosy. Okay, the inner lining become glandular, having so many convolutions. Okay, kubsari convolutions are here. Hmm? It having so many convolutions. And basic one, here is the atmosphere is acidic. While well, here is the alkaline. Again, the CT question or neat question. The medium in case of uterus is alkaline. It is alkaline in nature. Basically, in alkaline nature, the sperms become highly motile. It becomes highly motile. Okay, these sperms enter in a alkaline medium. Here is the alkaline medium. It is called as a uterine fluid. It is here is a the uterus is not empty. It is also filled with a fluid named as a yes uterine fluid or it is also called as uterine milk. Hmm? And who synthesizes it? The the glands, uterine glands, which are present in this are formed during the formation of endometrium. Hmm. These are the endocrine, uh, especially, sorry, these are the uterine glands. These uterine glands secrete a secretory substance and pour into this region. Okay, whatever the substance which is present in a uterus, 
hmm? that means the fluid from this fluid this sperm is moving towards the towards the ovum while they are journey towards the ovum some of the sperms get okay, now we are studying the next point arrival of sperm towards the ovum right hmm? the first one so here what happened here is the capacitation done okay here is the capacitation done okay so all this outermost layer get removed out and the sperm become capacitated this become capacitated in this okay so one question arises in our mind there are two ovaries there are two ovaries and these two ovaries are responsible for for formation of ovum a secondary oocyte so how the sperm gets recognized that this time we uh, the in which right of left side of the fallopian tube contains a secondary oocyte okay who contains a secondary oocyte there is no touch with the sperm to see the secondary oocyte okay okay and they doesn't having eyes so they can see the secondary oocyte it is present over here not at here okay so listen how it happens okay there, there that is simply a biochemical process it's a biochemical process biochemical reaction uh, especially the compatibility reaction and because of that the fertilization process is a species very specific to its species only so it is called as species specificity during a fertilization okay how so this ovum this ovum having sites called as fertilizing sites which are present on the outermost lining of the especially on a zona pellucida layer you know the zona zona pellucida layer okay in having a zona pellucida layer on a zona pellucida especially there are the receptors called z zona pellucida 3 receptors okay zb3 receptors okay and this especially called as fertilizing site hmm? and the sperm head having anti fertilizing sites okay it having this one is called as a anti fertilizing hmm? why suppose this is the secondary oocyte and this secondary oocyte having this zona layer and this up over to it it having a radiating cells are there these are the radiating cells though these are far away i have drawn but within them there is a tight bond of hyaluronic acid here yeah. Tight bond of a hyaluronic acid, and here are the receptors. Here are the receptors. Suppose, okay. Suppose this is the receptor. Okay, hmm. it is called as ZP three, zona pellucida three. Okay, so these are the receptors which are present on a on this. of uh, ovum or secondary oocyte okay and it this site is called as fertilizing site what it is named as a fertilizing and the sperm head having anti fertilizing which is species specificity and because of that only no other sperm of other species fuses the secondary oocyte of the human or it is all related with the uh, other species also so if we tried also in vitro to fuse them but it can't fuse okay forcefully when we introduce the pronuclei in the uh, near to the vicinity of the others then and then only the uh, that can can be i'm saying can be happens not uh, not always okay can be there is a possibility of formation of zygote or not okay so clear 
so it is species specific fertilizing site is present on this question can be asked the fertilizing site is present on secondary root site and anti fertilizing site is present on less sperm head on the sperm head and it shows compatibility with each other okay perfect matching and uh, fusion okay so that because of that only the sperm the sperm which are shaded into the into this region and those who enter into this region moves towards the site of the secondary oocyte and they can't um, uh, can't move the, into the another fallopian tube okay they only enters into the fallopian tube which contains the secondary oocyte and that is because of the attraction that the anti fertilizing attracted towards the fertilizing site of the secondary oocyte clear yeah? hmm. okay during this movement the sperm get capacitated during this movement the sperm get capacitated as i have stated earlier the sperm get capacitated secreted by the yes the pig cell or the non ciliated epithelial cells hmm? then the third step is the activation of the ovum now we are turning towards the next point that is the activation of the ovum so you all get this point insemination then arrival of sperm towards the secondary oocyte or the movement of sperm towards the egg okay now the third one is the especially it is called as the activation of ovum activation of ovum it is activation of secondary oocyte exactly so here is the fallopian tube i have drawn okay so suppose this is the fallopian tube slide big one this is it i'm drawing it slightly big i'm just showing the ampulla region just okay suppose this is the ampulla site in a ampulla the secondary oocyte is there as you know it having a white line membrane then this is the nucleus which is arrested at metaphase okay it is arrested at metaphase here then it having a transparent membrane called as a zona pellucida and around it there is a corona radiata layer the radiating cells which are present above here okay so this is the secondary oocyte which is present in a ampulla site right now the sperm which are moving here okay so first of cycle of the sperm is the acidic medium then the cervix which is too much tight then the third one is the convolutions of or the hyaline folded endometrium is also the obstacle for the movement of sperm into the uterus clear yeah. as well as the fluid and some phagocytic cells which are also present in this region okay so here the obstacles are acidic medium cervix the tight sphincter then the foldings of the in foldings of the endometrium then the uterine fluid also because of the fluid fluid which may contain some enzyme uh, enzymes which works on it and may uh, perish the sperm and also some wandering cells which are also attack on this non sense uh, so, so, sorry non self cells extremely sorry uh, these are the non self cells on which the phagocytic cells attacks 
and uh, some of the sperms get killed by the action of this also and then these mo moves into the fallopian tube okay the fallopian tube is is internally lined by ciliated epithelia as i have stated earlier okay from all the lining the tube from its inner lining hmm, totally lined by ciliated epithelia and this ciliated epithelia are beating at the especially towards the uterus side of the uterus to sweat the ovum but it makes and it is one of the obstacle the cilia are too big the cilia which are present in a fallopian tube these are big big in size and this those sperm which are moving the sperms which are moving suppose this is a sperm which is moving towards the ovum okay some sperms get entangled get pushed by the action of the sperms and by the action of the cilia and some of the sperms get entangled into the cilia the cilia they can't they can't get released from the cilia okay so their viability uh they they it doesn't act okay some of the sperms get entangled into the cilia and some are pushed back okay so these are also the obstacles hmm? and uh, those form who overcome all these obstacles moves towards the sperm uh, moves towards the secondary oocyte okay so this is the animal pole side and this is the vegetal pole side as i have stated the animal pole side is that uh, that side and where the first polar body and the nucleus of the secondary oocyte is present is called as a animal pole site and the site opposite to it it is called as a vegetal pole site clear mm -hmm. so the sperm which comes first it prefers animal pole site it prefers animal pole site okay it it prefers animal pole site to bind on it clear mm -hmm. okay as you know the sperm which reaches towards the secondary oocyte must be capacitated and of course obviously it get capacitated because of the fluids which are present in this all refractory tract clear which which conditions uh, which makes conditioning of the head of the sperm and releases all unnecessary material which is present on its head so that what happen okay what happen when the sperm get capacitated just below to this lining there is acrosome as you know this acrosome okay hmm? only the capacitated sperm especially this membrane get loosen okay when it tackles when it binds the anti fertilizing site of this sperm get bind with the fertilizing site of the secondary oocyte hmm okay during that what happened this cap okay this outermost membrane of the sperm is is capacitated only and that, because of that only when it tapers on this membrane the acrosomal cap get burst yeah okay this acrosomal cap get burst and it releases enzymes okay so see this is the sperm which is moving towards the secondary oocyte okay which having okay this is the nucleus big nucleus the sperm having a big nucleus and having a notch right and at this side it having acrosomal cap here is the acrosome clear okay vital line membrane peri vital line space post polar body to refer this diagram you can see the previous video here is the
this layer is called as zona pellucida, which is transparent one. And just about to it, there is a corona radiator cells. These are the corona radiator cells. These are all from all the sun. As you know, during successful coitus, near about 200 to 400 million sperms are ejaculated into the female reproductive tract. Okay, if we consider 400 million number of sperms are ejaculated into the vagina, only 200 remains because 200 get sacrificed to neutralize the vagina because the vagina is too acidic. Then some which get sacrificed into, the, into this endometrium as well as because of the endometrial fluid. That means some of get sacrificed into the uterus. Some get sacrificed into the fallopian tube itself by the action of cilia and the fluid which is present here. Okay. Right. Then further on. Okay. The sperms who get success, get succeed to reach towards the ovum. Okay. Arrival of for the arrival, the capacitated sperm, the sperm which is get capacitated, hmm, comes towards the ovum, takes near about seven hours. Six to seven hours. It requires six to seven hours, okay, to, to reach or to fuse towards the ovum. Only to pass the path from the vagina from the vagina towards the ovum, it requires only five minutes. But for capacitation, it requires six to seven hours. Okay, it requires six to seven hours. So, uh, at very first time, uh, during IVF, in vitro fertilization, a fresh sample is taken from the male, the semen sample is taken from the male, and the sperms are taken and which directly in a petri dish, which are directly comes near to the ovum. But they can't fuse the ovum. Okay, success, why there was not success? The reason behind that, the sperms which are directly taken from the male, okay, and uh, directly poured into the vicinity, near to the vicinity of the secondary oocyte in vitro, they can't fuse. Because the sperm, and afterwards, the, the doctors or the gynecologists or IVF experts recognize that there must be something which makes activate the sperm or capacitate the sperm. And that capacitated material is especially present in this uterine tract, into the uh, reproductive tract of the female. And nowadays, technique is developed that capacitate the sperm, and then after capacitated, the sperms are poured near to the vicinity of the, the near to the vicinity of secondary oocyte. Clear? OK. Now, what happened? This is the corona radiator. Okay, so what happened? The capacitated sperm which comes to your near to this vicinity. Here is the site to receive it, hmm, fertilizing site. So when it tapers to it, the this lining, the acrosome get burst. As the acrosome gate burst, it releases enzymes. Okay. Okay. So the enzymes are okay, which works on this. Here, as you know, the corona radiator cells are glued with each other by hyaluronic acid. So on hyaluronic acid, the enzyme which works is called as hyaluronic days enzyme. Okay. So first, hyaluronic days, days enzyme. OK, 
okay this enzyme work on this cells and this glue cells get separated from each other because of this enzyme these cells get separated hmm? these cells get separated from each other okay and this cells moves towards the side okay suppose they get aside and this corona radiata cells get loosened okay loose okay so then what happened what happened the sperm moves towards this region okay the sperm moves towards this region from where the enzymes are released and the another one it moves suppose it moves it moves the sperm moves forward okay then another enzyme is released that is the acrosin and zona lysin zona lysin or acrosin mm. this enzyme get released as the enzyme get released the sperm penetrate into the zona layer okay it start penetrating inside i'm showing the movement of sperm from corona layer to now towards the zona zona layer it moves towards the zona okay and as soon as it touches towards the to the plasma membrane or a white line membrane as soon as it stretches to this membrane what happened okay what happened here so here the fertilization cone get established or formed fertilization cone get formed when the sperm head touches to the plasma membrane and it is called as a fertilization cone clear named as a here is the site at where the male male sperm head touches to the to the plasma membrane of the secondary oocyte is called as a fertilization cone okay the question in this year may be asked on this okay fertilization what do you mean by fertilization cone okay so it is a very important stuff related with the meat okay so this point is called as a the site is called as a fertilization cone formation of fertilization cone took place right then further on afterwards as soon as it touches towards the plasma membrane something happens to this secondary oocyte the biochemical change initiate in a secondary oocyte what change of this activation of ovum took place as you know this secondary oocyte having a big size nucleus which is centrally placed having chromosomes at equator that means the secondary oocyte is arrested at metaphase clear it is arrested at metaphase as you know and because of that only it is it is not completing its cleavage uh, or cell division okay so what happened the complete cell division was not uh, the cell division was not completed by the secondary oocyte and because of that it get arrested at metaphase and so we named it as a secondary oocyte we are not uh, saying it as an ovum hmm? now we can say it as ovum because as soon as the sperm head touches to the white line membrane or the plasma membrane a biochemical change suddenly starts inside the nucleus and this nucleus starts dividing okay and try to complete 
it's cell division okay and then we can say it as a oval now we can say it as a oval clear everyone okay as soon as the sperm get attached to it the secondary oocyte was not ready yet hmm? though the sperm enters to the and uh, lies out the corona layer doesn't happen hmm? penetrate the zona layer then touches to the white line membrane now right from this moment the biochemical change occur inside the nucleus and the secondary oocyte which was not ready okay not in a complete cell division state it start dividing it is arrested at metaphase okay and tries to complete this cell division yeah okay it starts dividing then metaphase and anaphase and further on takes place and the these chromatids get at this site okay so now it is complete division now it is a complete division now we can say it as a ovum yes everyone getting when i was showing you uh, uh, i was explaining you a uh, oogenesis at that time i have mentioned that uh, after fertilization it turns the secondary oocyte turns into the ovum got the point everyone yes yes everyone getting the point right hmm. then now what happened this is the fertilization pool from where now a small the especially here are so many biochemical changes the potassium ion channels get formed and all that forms okay as soon as it get touches okay and from this channel the nucleus and the proximal centrum enters inside okay the remaining head part as you know the head of the sperm having little amount of cytoplasm but but big size nucleus right little amount of cytoplasm was there but it having centrum here is a big large amount of cytoplasm and nothing doesn't having centrum right okay so the you can see the mismatch uh, both are incomplete but now getting a complete one how this doesn't having the secondary oocyte doesn't having the proximal centrioles it lacks centrioles here is a very little amount of cytoplasm here is a large amount of cytoplasm okay so what happened further on the nucleus hmm, it becomes solar big in size hmm big size nucleus become more and more big size nucleus now it is named as a male pronuclei and the compl after completing the cell division the female uh, the secondary oocytes nucleus now the ovum nucleus we can say it as an a uh, female pronuclei this is a male pronuclei and this is the female pronuclei as soon as listen one more point i have i have to explain this corona radiata get lies out first of all it get lies out when the uh, hydro uh, hyaluronidase enzyme get released which loses it right okay then now the zona layer is there which layer is there zona layer hmm? so the outermost covering here is the zona layer is there this is the zona layer the remaining part now the remaining part get released get degenerated the remaining part of the head of the sperm middle piece and tail piece get vanished okay by the action of the enzyme at the same time as you can see near about million number of sperms to some thousands some hundreds of the sperm some hundreds of the sperm reaches to the ovum 
So this is the right race. Right. So so many sperms are trying, are trying to fuse the secondary oocyte. Okay. Secondary oocyte at the same time. But when there is a requirement of only one, there is a requirement of only one sperm is required to fuse. Right? Only one sperm is required to fuse. When the one sperm get fused, okay, after fusion, after entering, what happened? This here is the fertilizing membrane get formed. Just about to this is a fertilizing membrane get formed. Surround it. And it is formed by the cortical granules. Okay, it is a very a deep biochemical change is there, very deep. But you are not supposed to study very deep biochemistry regarding with this. Hmm? You have to only follow our book, or you are when if you are preparing uh, need preparing for need, then you can uh, refer NCRT. Okay. Okay. So this membrane is get formed. This is called as a fertilizing membrane. When it get formed, when the one sperm uh, shapes or releases its nucleus into the cytoplasm, okay, or touches to the vitelline membrane, at that time a biochemical change happens, and this I, it results into the formation of fertilizing membrane. What get formed? Fertilizing membrane get formed. And by the formation of fertilizing membrane, then what happened? The other sperms which are trying to invade or trying to enter into the ovum. Now I'm saying ovum. Okay. A shield get from, formed around this. Okay. And it doesn't allow any sperm to fuse further on. So it avoids polysperming. What it avoids? This membrane, which is formed after the few, after the entry of the one uh, gap, one after the entry of the nucleus of the sperm into the cytoplasm. During that, the fertilizing membrane which is formed, which pre which prevents polysperming. It prevents polyspermy. What do you mean by polyspermy? Poly means many. And sperms. Okay, polyspermy means many sperms. It avoids fusion of many sperms towards the ovum. So we have to retain the diploid number throughout generation to generation. If, if suppose, rather than one, another one sperm get fused, then there will be a triploidy, right? And that will not happen because every sperm having unique genetic composition and having small, small uh, variation within them, right? So it may uh, create the another species. Okay, so here is the entry of the male. Now we can call this as a male pronuclei and a female pronuclei. This male pronuclei follows a specific path into the cytoplasm and then reaches towards the female pronuclei to fuse, to form amphimixes, to share the chromosomal material within themselves called as a amphimixes. The sharing, first of all, syngamy, fusion of two different gametes. Then sharing of nuclear material and mixes to space. Okay, now then when these two get fused with each other, then we can call it as a zygote. Then we can name it as a zygote, and the zygote is a unicellular embryo. Yeah. So further on, the post-fertilization changes we will study in our next video. Thank you.